Okay, we'll begin here with an empty scene in 3ds Max. And I'll go to my standard primitives and bring in a cylinder object. Make sure that your generate mapping coordinates parameter is checked. And we'll give this object a height of around 60 millimeters and a radius of around 20 millimeters. And these uh, values are completely optional uh, depending on your scene. Um, I'm going to give it, uh, since we're working with a low poly object, I'll go with five sides, but again, that's up to you. I'll turn off the smoothing object option and I'll make sure it has a height segment value of five as well. Now I'll add an edit poly modifier and I'll go ahead to my polygon mode and select the top and bottom end gons and just delete them. Now we're left with this five sided tube and I'll switch to edge mode and go ahead and select these four interior edge loops and add a chamfer to them. I'm holding down shift while I click on the chamfer icon to bring up the caddy and I'm going to change the chamfer amount to around 0.2 millimeters, something very, very minimal. Okay. Um, because uh, we don't need a large chamfer here. I'm going to go ahead and select the topmost edge loop on each of the new chamfer segments. Okay. And also the bottom edge loop on the object, the border edge loop. I'll tap R to bring up my scale gizmo and I will scale on just the X and Y axis out to about 150, around 150 on just the X and Y. All right, and that'll leave us with something like this. All right, now I'll tap W to bring up the move gizmo and I'll just pull these edges down slightly on the Z axis until they're just about below parallel to the other edge loops. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and select the uh, top border edge loop and use collapse to bring it down to just a point. And uh, I'll pull that vertex up along the Z axis as well until I'm happy with the look of the object here because that'll be the top of our tree. All right. So now I'll go ahead and add a taper modifier. Um, just type T and it should bring you down to the taper and hit enter on the keyboard to add it. And I'll just reduce the amount in a negative value until I have a tree-like shape to the object. And feel free to play around with the amount and also the curve value of the taper modifier to give it a custom look. All right, you can get a lot of different results here and um, get a unique looking tree. All right, so now I'll add an edit poly modifier on top of that. And I'll go ahead and select the bottom border loop. Tap R to bring up the uh, scale gizmo. And while I hold down shift on the keyboard, I'll just scale out some new faces here and leave a little bit of an opening. And again, I'll tap W for the move gizmo and holding down shift, I'll just pull out some new and a new extrusion on the Z axis. Okay, R for the scale gizmo and just close it up there and use collapse to cap it off. All right, so now I'm going to select those newly extruded faces and I'm going to set the uh, material ID to two and then I'll tap I on the keyboard to invert the selection and I'll give those faces of a, an ID of one. Okay, now I'm just tapping the hard icon up there in the graphite modeling ribbon to remove the smoothing groups real quickly give it that low poly look. So now we'll do a quick UV unwrap on the object. So remember when I said to uh, make sure to generate 
mapping coordinates was ticked early on and this will be why so I'm holding down shift and just dragging out a copy of the original object so I can have the modifiers intact on the original and uh, I'll go ahead and collapse all the modifiers on this model on the copy all right and I hid the original from from view here okay and I'm just gonna go ahead and add a, an unwrap UVW modifier and control A to select all of the polygons and you could see that there are, are indeed uh, UV coordinates uh, seams are already available here from our original primitive model so I'll just go ahead over here and uh, click the quick peel icon and then I'll bring up the editor window and I'll just go ahead and select all of the faces on the UV island in the editor window and I'll use the tools just to position it uh, how I like it all right uh, for maybe I'll paint on it later or whatever but I'll situate it here in the window now how I like it and uh, just play around with the island okay once you're happy with it uh, let's say I'll rotate it around a little bit here and I'll normalize the island all right and I'm happy with that for now so I'll go ahead and close the uh, editor window and I'll collapse the modifier to the model okay tap M on the keyboard to bring up the material editor and we'll add a multi sub object material and we'll change the number of materials to two and then we'll go ahead and add a standard material as well all right once we have the standard material in the slate editor I'll go ahead and hold down shift while I drag a copy of it and I'll just connect these up to the sub object material okay now I'll just change the diffuse color on each of these to be something a little bit more appropriate to a Christmas tree alright and I'll just drag that out into the viewport and attach it to the model and there we go so I'm pretty happy with that again you could have any kind of unique look to your tree you want I think we'll uh, call that a finished tree but of course this will be a Christmas tree so we'll create a well let me just change the wire colors to black here I always like to do that all right so F hotkey to bring up the front viewport and feel free to go ahead and tweak anything you see fit here I don't like how that top vertex looks a little bit off center although it may not be but it just appears that way right here so I'm going to uh, just tweak that a little bit so I like how it looks okay and we'll add a star I think to the top of our tree here so let's go over to our shapes panel and we'll go ahead and add a star into the viewport a star spline just like this in the front viewport and you can give it any shape you want uh, play around with the parameters this really is up to you how you want this to appear I think I'll go with a five-pointed star here and just rotate it so it appears appropriate in the viewport here okay and I'll tap P to go back into perspective view and I'll go ahead and select the spline and add an extrude modifier to that spline and I'll just give it an extrude amount of perhaps two millimeters because I don't know maybe in the future I might decide to 3d print this thing who knows so I'll do everything according to those th those tolerances 
And right now I'm just going to select the front and back end guns on the star after converting it to an editable poly object. And I'll add a tessellate in the graphite modeling ribbon and I'll change it to from edge to face. And in vertex mode, I will go ahead and select the front and back vertex and switch to my scale gizmo and just pull those out along the Y axis. Okay. And I'll go ahead and get rid of the smoothing groups on that since it's low poly as well. Okay, and then I'll just switch to my move gizmo and to the left viewport and I'll just position it accordingly to the top of the tree. And there we go. Let me zoom in here and just bring it down to the to the very tip. Okay. And there's a nice cartoony star and I'll just change the uh, change the wire color there to yellow. And there it is. And of course you can unwrap the star, but we won't do that here. Um, since the tutorial is really just about the tree. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'll have more coming soon to the channel, so make sure you subscribe and uh, like the video if you did find it useful. And I will see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye for now.